Hey there, creepy peeps. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, welcome back. If you're returning, hi, I love you. Today, we need to recap the month and the year, so get comfy. So like I said, this is gonna kind of be a long video, so uh, there will be time codes <laughs> in a pinned comment down below if you want to jump around. Other than that, if you plan on sitting here through however long this video is gonna be, get something to drink, get a snack, get comfy, and let's get into this. So first, really quick, let's go over what I watched in December. So first to start off the month, I watched The Return of the Living Dead, which is actually the first time I'd ever watched this, even though it's been on my <laughs> shelf back here for who knows how long. Busted of me to watch by one of my patrons, Efrain, if you don't know, on one of the tiers of my Patreon, you can request me to watch a movie and review it every single month. I'm trying out a slightly new format for that by integrating it into the monthly recaps. And then I'm gonna ask my patrons to pick which ones they like best. <laughs> um, previously, I've been doing them as like mini reviews. I really liked it. I know it's like one of those that everybody in the horror community really loves. So, well, maybe not everybody, but you know, people who like it, really like it. <laughs> and to finally see for the first time. And it's actually quite fun. Like, I mean, it's got a really awesome score. Uh, the zombies obviously look a little cheesy, but they're all like practical effects, which is really cool. And they just, you know, they look slimy. Well, a lot of them look slimy and gross and cool. Like, and it, I'm gl I'm happy to know now where all of the like iconic like gifs and scenes I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> come from so um yeah thank you Efrain for requesting that for me to watch because I had a great time watching it then also another patron request I watched The Divine Fury which was requested by Raiders aka Felix you just his username is Raider so that's how you know who he is um man <laughs> Felix kind of knocked it out of the park this is a South Korean it's not like a fully horror movie it's kind of like an action horror but it does have horror elements in it and it's south korean so obviously i was gonna watch it um it's essentially about this mma fighter who <laughs> ends up helping a priest perform exorcisms because he has this newfound ability to exercise demons that's all i'm gonna say without giving anything away I really enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> there were parts of it that are kind of cheesy, but I thought it was really fun. And at first I thought the CGI was kind of bad, which I was a little bit disappointed in for it being a 2019 movie, but <laughs> the whole movie made up for it with the very last fight scene. Again, without giving too much away, there's a character who essentially has like a flaming fist, like, you know, his fists covered in like fire, you know, really cool. I think they spent all of their time and money CGI wise into this scene because it looked so clean, so good. And it's like, it's not that they just showed it once or twice. There's like a whole like 10 minute fight scene and you see the guy with the fist multiple times when he's just fighting with it. And it just looks so good. Like it straight up looks real. It just looks real. Um, <laughs> I know it's a weird thing for me to point out, but I really liked it. Um, and I really liked the main actor, Park Seo Jun. Park Seo Jun. He's the main character and I recognized him. And I think it was because when you first see him, he's in an MMA fight. So he has like his gear on and stuff and he's in a ring. And I'm like, why does this look so familiar? This actor was also the star of a K-drama that I really like called Fight For My Way in which he plays like an MMA fighter. <laughs> so I guess he has a background in this. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I instantly recognized him. I really like that one. Four out of five. Good job, Felix. I know that sounds condescending when I say that, but Felix and I frequently disagree on movies. So when he suggests something <laughs> that I really like, uh, I'm, you know, I get extra excited. And I watched Rare Exports. One, because it's the holiday season and you have to watch Rare Exports. I also wrote an article about it for Morbidly Beautiful. I'll link it in the description. Just really love that movie. It's a great holiday horror movie that I think doesn't get talked about enough. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's a great movie. Then I watched Nasty Piece of Work, which was part of Hulu's Into the Dark series. Not so much a fan of that one. I give it two, two and a half. It was like middle of the road. Wasn't, wasn't my favorite. 
Christmas horror movie that I've ever seen. Then of course I watched Home Alone and Home Alone 3 inexplicably. I don't know why I just didn't feel like watching Home Alone 2, but I just didn't. I low-key love Home Alone 3 though, you know? I don't know how other people really feel about it, but the song, I can't sing it because I'm gonna get a uh, copyright strike, but the song in Home Alone 3 when he, you know, like the montage song when he's going around and setting up all the traps always gets stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's been stuck in my head ever since I've seen that movie as a child. <laughs> then I watched Road Games, which was requested of me by my patron, Macabrella. Um, this one is an 80s horror movie that, like, kind of stars Jamie Lee Curtis. She's not in a lot of the movie, but it's essentially about a trucker who is frequently encountering who he thinks is a serial killer that he keeps hearing about. Um, on his radio while he's driving and he picks up Jamie Lee Curtis and she gets kidnapped by the serial killer so it turns into him you know like hunting him down and saving her and it was like it was okay it was cool for for what it was it was okay then <laughs> Eric requested that I watched Humanoids from the Deep which the best way I can describe this movie is combination of Creature from the Black Lagoon and Jaws <laughs> It's essentially about this kind of like beach, not like a beach town, but like a, a seaside town. There, there are these like giant sea monsters that keep appearing and killing people and raping women, which is an interesting choice. I gave it a two and a half out of five. I thought it was a, it mostly lost points for the just this really strange choice that they were like sex crazed <laughs> monsters and they would they frequently were killing the men and raping the women. It happens multiple times where I'm kind of just like, okay. I mean, it's not graphic, but you, you can tell that's what's happening. Don't know that it needed that. That's why it lost points for me. I don't know that I needed that. Then I watched Black Christmas, which you can watch my review of. And I also recommend you watching my latest Unpopular Horror Opinions video where I also talk about Black Christmas. And then upon Scuba Steve's request, um, a link his channel in the description. He's also a patron. Um, he requested that I watch The Furies. It's an Australian horror movie, kind of like Hunger Games, Most Dangerous Game kind of style, where these women have been captured and brought to, you know, these isolated woods, and there are these big giant men in scary masks hunting them. But there's a, like, that's like a very simplified version of what's going on. The actual story behind what's going on in this movie is actually kind of complicated and intricate and it's, yeah, it's it's interesting. Like, like I said, it was kind of a complicated and intricate story that they came up with and it was interesting. I just felt like they maybe didn't spend as much time with it as I would have liked, if that makes sense speaking very vague here. And then upon Chance's request, I watched Home for the Holidays, which is a 70s horror drama thing um, starring Sally Field. And it's uh, all of these sisters that go home for the holidays and they visit their estranged father who is convinced that his new wife is trying to slowly poison him to death. As you would imagine, there's a twist. <laughs> you know, what you think is happening is not necessarily what's happening. I did kind of see the twist coming. I figured it wasn't going to be what we thought it was going to be. You know what I mean? Still like, it was still like a fun watch, kind of like Hitchcocky a little bit. And it has like a young Sally Fields in it. So that's cool. Um, not a bad movie. I, you know, I wasn't mad at it. And then Azul requested that I watch Young Sherlock Holmes, which is an 80s movie that is not based on anything that um, Arthur Conan Doyle wrote about Sherlock, but it's kind of just like a reimagining of essentially like asking what if Holmes and Watson met as young boys in school. And it's set against obviously this murder mystery that the two of them solve. Um, it's very whimsical, very fun. Um, I kind of didn't like the fact that Watson was kind of like a bumbling idiot <laughs> through most of the movie. <laughs> Other than that, it was it was a cute, it was a cute movie. Then you'll see the next two things I watched were Saint or Sint and Elves. That was for Does This Offend You, our second Christmas episode. Um, uh, I'll link the playlist for Does This Offend You up here if you want to catch up on any 
episodes you may have missed. Sint was a little more straightforward in its controversialness, where Elves was just like a whole thing. So I <laughs> highly recommend you watch it and definitely watch it for the beginning where I didn't realize we were live and yeah, just go ahead and watch the intro, it's funny. And then I watched Christmas Evil and Black Christmas, the original Black Christmas. I was meant to <laughs> be on Desmond Flake's podcast, but the day I was supposed to film, there was an emergency. I could not be home and film, unfortunately. So that sucks, because <laughs> I really wanted to talk about these two movies with him, but <laughs> then I watched The Nightingale. Um, I wrote a tiny little blurb about that for Morbidly Beautiful. Um, every year they do a best indie horror of the year. I gave it a five out of five. Um, yeah, it was just not the easiest movie to watch, but somehow rewarding even given how dark it is. And then I only logged a Christmas story on here once. Obviously, <laughs> starting on Christmas Eve, um, I essentially just have TBS on. It's super wasteful. I just have it on all night and all of Christmas Day uh, for their annual 24 hours of a Christmas story. <laughs> um, so I just logged it once though because you know, I watched it way, way more times than that. I also watched Krampus because I can't get through a Christmas season without watching Krampus. Ho for Michael Doherty, we know this. And then I watched Anna and the Apocalypse, which that review went up on my channel last week. I reviewed it with my friend Aaron, who is a musical theater expert. So it's a very complete review. Not only did we re review the horror aspects of it, we reviewed the musical aspects of it and it was super fun. And, <laughs> and then you'll see that Return of the Living Dead is on here again. That's because my patrons wanted to watch it for our movie night this month. So we watched it again, um, which is fine because I really enjoyed the movie. <laughs> also, um, these, just, these two things aren't like movie, movie related, but uh, one of my patrons, Miko, AKA Muddy Cult Madhouse, I'll link her channel in the description, requested that I watch When They Cry, which is an anime series. It's on Hulu if anybody's interested. Um, it's essentially about this boy who moves to a very isolated, very rural town that has a super dark secret. Founding um, the almost construction of a dam that would have completely like wiped out their town. They would have all had to move um, and the town would essentially be underwater. <laughs> but they protested it. There was a death surrounding the, the protests. And every year around the same time, um, somebody is killed and somebody goes missing. And this boy who has just moved here is essentially trying to help this investigator figure out what's going on. I thought it was super creepy and it's like, it instantly pulls you into the mystery to where I feel like I can't not finish the series. Like I have to figure out what is going on. Do you know what I mean? And also one of my patrons, Mormozine, will link his channel in the description. Um, <laughs> wanted me to review one of his videos, but I don't, I don't feel right giving somebody's like personal video a rating. So I'm just going to direct you to that video. It will be linked in the description along with his channel. Now we're gonna move on to 2019 as a recap. I'm just gonna do books and movies because yeah. So I did set a Goodreads goal for myself uh, at 30 books. This is the first time I've ever like set a challenge for myself for amount of books to read. I surpassed that, I read 41 books, which compared to maybe a lot of people is not that much. But for me, it's not necessarily about the number of books I read versus making sure I read books that I want to read. Um, so I guess before I tell you like my top 10 books, I only DNF'd two books this year. So the first one I DNF'd is The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. Um, one of my coworkers suggested it actually. Um, <laughs> feel bad for not liking it. It's just very, it's like historical fiction, but super heavy on like the history. And I got, I got to 100 pages, but it was like at the point I, gave up it was like somebody telling a story of somebody telling a story like it was like inception but for storytelling and it was kind of just like ugh, i felt no connection to the main character whatsoever in the amount that i read so i was just it was boring me to tears unfortunately so i didn't finish it another one i tried to read 
and did not finish is Helter Skelter by Vincent Bugliosi and Kurt Gentry. Written by an attorney and it reads like it's written by an attorney. Um, you know, definitely good if you, if you want like a more factual account of what happened. Everything is kind of just like cold hard facts, at least from up to what I read. Um, and I'm more of a, like a, <laughs> I need to know people's stories and I, I understand, don't worry, I understand that that means I read a lot of biased material if it's from one person's point of view, but it's like, it's, <laughs> for me it's easier to read the story if I connect to a character or I connect to a person, so something that would be more interesting for me to read, at least concerning this, would be something like Member of the Family, who is written by somebody who is in the Manson family. I realize that makes them biased, but... It's just, it's more interesting to me. Uh, I want to hear a person's story. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to go over, try and go over kind of quickly what my top 10 books were for the year. Obviously, these are the top 10 books that I read this year. The majority of these did not <laughs> come out in 2019. So, but number 10 favorite book was Intensity by Dean Koontz. This was actually, I think, our January pick for Creepy Book Club. If you didn't know, I have a Creepy Book Club. Um, link in the description. You can join us and read. Um, <laughs> um, this one was really good. Very, like, I was gonna say very serial killery. That's what it is. But the chapters from the, the killer's point of view are definitely some of the most interesting and maybe the one of the better like killer POVs that I've read kind of makes me scared of Dean Koontz a little bit but next favorite book technically is I just technically put the series in here this is the first one Midsummer Night's Mischief which is a cozy mystery um this is essentially like if a murder mystery it's like a murder mystery on the Lifetime channel you know not extremely gory and scary um but still fun to read and this one is by Jennifer Davin Hesse or Hess um, and it's a Wiccan wheel mystery. If you're into witchy stuff like I am, highly recommend, especially like Wiccan stuff. This is like very accurate. I don't know if the author is also Wiccan, but if not, she really did her research. So it's just really good. And I found like me and the main character, there was a lot of things that were really eerily similar. <laughs> Real, like eerily similar. So I had a really great time reading this. I had, super easy to connect to the main character. Eighth <laughs> favoritist read, favoritist read is Dracul by Dave Chris Stoker and J.D. Barker. It is essentially hmm, kind of a prequel to Dracula. It's the story of Bram Stoker. His encounters with vampires pre him writing Dracula. It's really good and the particularly the um, author's notes at the back um, concerning Bram Stoker's actual notes for Dracula. Kind of scary, I'm not gonna lie. A little bit scary. I um, highly recommend picking up just for that alone, but the story is actually really good. <laughs> Number seven for me is Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. Um, just really good, super short read. I feel like I don't need to summarize, summarize it too much because of the movie. Um, although, I <laughs> this is true a lot of times, but this book, I'm sorry, the book is so much better than the movie. <laughs> I just feel like something was lost in the movie format that made the book for me ultra terrifying. So highly recommend the book. Even if you like the movie just a little bit, I promise the book is different in the best ways. Uh, number six, I'll keep this one super brief, Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant, which was actually our December pick for Creepy Book Club. Um, You'll be able to see my review of this, not next video, but the video after. Um, so I'll just, I'll save my thoughts until then, but it made my top 10. So my fifth favorite book of the year, I just, I realized I lifted it a little bit before I revealed it, is The Lady from the Black Lagoon by Mallory O'Meara. I find it really hard to rank nonfiction against fiction movies, but you know, I didn't find it that difficult, I guess, for books. This is really good. It's a really good story. It's the story of Millicent Patrick, who helped design the creature from the Black Lagoon, an iconic <laughs> universal movie monster. Um, yeah, it's basically all, it's it's all about that. And it's, it's Mallory O'Meara telling her own story, kind of, through 
how she came to find out all this information about Millicent, if that makes sense. It's uh, it's good. It's better than what I'm making it sound like. Um, also the cover porn too, so just saying. Then I finally read <laughs> Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. Um, so this is my fourth fourth favorite book of the year. <laughs> um, I really wanted to read it so that I can start reading The Rules of Magic, which they are making a series about. The Rules of Magic is um, the aunts, the story of the aunts when they were younger, younger, younger. But this obviously is so, so different from the movie. Um, I love both. I thought the book was great. It's just different in a lot of ways from what the movie is. Um, but still, you, it's, the essence of both is the same. Do you know what I mean? Like the heart of both are the same. Um, so I'm glad I finally read this. It's <laughs> rare for me to do that after seeing the movie so many times, I usually wouldn't bother to try and read the book. But in the third spot is The Invited by Jennifer McMahon, uh, which is about two school teachers, essentially, a history teacher and a science teacher. They're a married couple. They're tired of city and suburb life and they move out to the sticks essentially and they are building their own home but the land that they are building their home on is cursed kind of it's haunted it's just really good um <laughs> the the way jennifer mcmahon like builds the tension and reveals the story like it's just really good timing like it just when you think like you you would start to get bored something else happens and you're like oh, oh you know what i mean and it's just really creepy so highly recommend the invited all right getting into our top two here my second favorite book that i read this year is i'm thinking of ending things by ian reed um been wanting to read this for a little bit because they've announced that the movie has been announced for a little bit too i don't know if it's meant to be coming out in 2020 kind of hope it is. Um, I think Tony Collette is going to be in it. So um, <laughs> this is definitely one kind of a shorter read. I would highly recommend trying to read this in as few sittings as you can. Like if you have a whole day off to read this, just do it nonstop. Um, you'll get to a point where you're not going to be able to put it down anyway. But uh, a couple that are driving out in wintry and snowy conditions, they're going to visit the boys' uh, parents dark and scary things happen. I don't really want to tell you the plot of this because it's just something you need to read. It's one of those like it got to a point where I couldn't put it down so I just had to sit there and keep reading no matter how late it was and after it was finished I, I must have sat there for 30 to 45 minutes just kind of going over everything I just read in my head. It's one of those kind of like cerebral books that you're not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna leave you for a while um but i love when a book or a movie does that and yeah i couldn't recommend this book more um yeah i'm thinking of ending things the most favorite read of the year we sold our souls by grady hendrix um if i wasn't such a hoe for michael doherty my hoedom would be to grady hendrix <laughs> I love everything this man has written so far. Um, I can't wait for his next book. And he's just, uh, he's really good at writing female characters. Super refreshing to see from a male author anyway. Um, I don't wanna be like that, but sometimes it be is like that, you know? Our main character, Chris, uh, used to be a member of a pretty successful metal band. One of the band members went solo to ridiculous amounts of fame um, at the expense of his band members and it gets to a point where Chris is just basically fed up. So she goes to each of her other former band members to try and convince them to go see a former friend and demand, demand justice for them essentially. Scary shit happens. Favorite book I read all year. Highly, 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 highly recommend. Now finally, the moment you've all been waiting for my 2019 ranking. Before I do that, I wanna dive back into my analytics on Letterboxd to see if anything has changed significantly. If you remember, I did do this about halfway through the year. I'll link it up here for you. Um, so we're gonna to cut to a slightly future Vicky who's gonna go over that really quick. <laughs> Hello, it is Maven from the future, kind of not for you guys but <laughs> i am right now looking at my 2019 stats on letterbox it's taken a minute to load 
As you see here, some of the <laughs> posters have not loaded. So let's quickly look at what we did in 2019. So we watched 276 films, maybe not exactly 276, it's entries so that I imagine could count rewatches. Um, yeah, okay. Um, highest rated films. I mean, <laughs> a lot of this is stuff that I've watched a million times and just really, really like. The only new ones I see are The Nightingale, Knives Out, Little Monsters. Everything else is just favorites that I rewatched. Um, Ooh, okay, so let's see. So we average 23 films per month. So, I mean, that's almost one a day. That's that's uh, pretty much accurate. Ooh, I love how it breaks down the day of the week. I watch the most films Thursday, Wednesday, and Friday. That makes sense because that's when I'm, like, preparing for videos for, like, the next week or something. And Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is usually when I have the most time to do that. So that makes sense. I love how you can see... <laughs> when I s spiked here in May for some reason. Um, and September, <laughs> yeah, begin this September right here, I, the, the spikiness is definitely for 31 days of Halloween. For show, for show. <sighs> there were straight up, <laughs> like the last week of October, no films. <laughs> Let's see what else, milestones. First film, <gasps> first film I watched was The Changeling. That's exciting. Most watched, Return of the Living Dead. I only watched that twice. Oh, I only watched anything twice. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Satanic Panic, Hocus Pocus, Trick or Treat, The Craft, cool. And the last film I watched was The Return of the Living Dead. Um, so far. I guess that's the last one I recorded on the 27th. I don't think I've watched anything since then though, so um, that makes sense. Uh, obviously, top genre here is horror, closely followed by thriller with some comedy. Again, mostly US films mostly North American films and UK. Yeah. I know Sebastian gave me a lot of suggestions for Spanish films, I think you did, um, which I'm going to use to maybe try and bolster my foreign films in 2020. I would like to, um, I would like to bolster my uh, foreign horror in 2020. <coughs> I feel like either way, the like US and English speaking film, English speaking films are, you know, definitely gonna always be higher because even if I watch movies from certain different countries, it's still English speaking. Um, <laughs> but I would like to just close the gap, make it less apparent <laughs> on some of these if I can. So, if, you know, maybe you see these countries here and you have some suggestions. Feel free to send them my way. Uh, let's see. What's this? Breakdown. New releases or older. Oh, wow. Only 16% were new releases. <sighs> 45. Well, I guess that makes sense. That's pretty good. Maybe just because I watch so many movies. That's why it seems so small. Why am I not in focus? Um, Rewatches were actually a little bit lower. So that's that's pretty good. I mean, it was almost a 50-50 split, but that's not so bad. <laughs> not reviewed. <laughs> reviewed. I don't usually write a review on Letterboxd. I just do the uh, stars. Um, yeah. Especially if I review it in a video, I don't see the point in writing out a review. TBH. Rating spread. It looks like, wow, really not that many low rated films compared to how many I watched. So that's, I'm very generous with the five stars apparently. <laughs> and that's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, stars, most watched, Tony Todd apparently, and Christopher Lee, Bill Mosley. Wow, okay. Okay, okay. Highest rated, Nev Campbell, <laughs> my queen, <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay, I like that. Yeah, obviously it's from Scream. There's Nev Campbell, David Arquette, Courtney Cox, <laughs> Skeet Ulrich. Yeah, clearly that's from uh, Scream. Okay. 
<laughs> uh, directors, let's see, most watched, Peter Jackson, followed by Rob Zombie, Michael Doherty. You need to make more movies, Michael. Such a hope for Michael Doherty, okay. Highest rated, Wes Craven. <laughs> Tim Burton, Jermaine Clement, Taika YTT. Wow, 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 okay. Wow, okay. Some people I wasn't expecting in here, Chris Columbus. <laughs> uh, let's see, most watched, oh, Crew and Studios. Of course, Jason Blum, unfortunately, Harvey Weinstein, again, which is probably, Harvey and Bob are probably from Scream. <laughs> Your more, most liked review, Scream, okay. <laughs> Your most liked list, the year in horror. I mean, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Highs and lows, highest average. Is this like everybody else's average or what? The, like the on average, the highest, yeah, that makes sense. Lowest average, the haunting of Sharon Tate. Um, most popular, Joker. Most obscure, the demonologist. <laughs> Why is it focusing over my shoulder? I don't know what's back there. Um, and then all of the films watched in 2019. Again, it hasn't really loaded some of these, but it's really crazy to see all of them like this. Highly rated films you missed. I didn't get to see Parasite. <laughs> We're adding it to my watch list right now. I don't use my watch list as often I should. Fleabag. Never heard of that. Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Little Women. BTS World Tour. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Ring the soul, the movie. Wow. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, that's that. Back to other Maven. Okay. So let's start at the bottom here, kind of, not to dwell too much on the negative, but I know y'all probably want to see which ones I disliked the most. Um, <laughs> so the very, very bottom of my list is The Farm. And I'm going to be honest, I was kind of shocked to see it on this list because this year has been so long. <laughs> all of this stuff I watched at the beginning of the year feels like I watched it a year ago. Well, I kind of technically did, but you know what I mean? Like, it feels like I watched it in 2018, not 2019. Do you know what I mean? The The Farm was the only half star rating, though. So, I mean, that's something. Also at the bottom of the list, The Demonologist, again, feels like I watched that like two years ago. Um, Black Christmas, Lords of Chaos, Candy Corn, unfortunately. Um, that one is like two star though. So there really wasn't too many super, super low rated uh, movies this year though. So there's that. You can kind of see all my middle ones here. Three from Hell, Pet Cemetery, Child's Play, bunch of stuff in the middle. Some of this stuff, like it just like blew my mind that I actually watched this all this year. Um, <laughs> Ones that were very, very close to making the, the top 10, The Perfection, which I thought was a great, great movie. I think so, a lot of people were divided on that one. Um, the Divine Fury, which I just talked about, Satanic Panic, Happy Death Day to You. Um, it's kind of there, it made the top 15. I wasn't so much a fan of chapter two as I was chapter one. Now on to the top 10. So coming in at number 10 is Godzilla. Are we surprised? Michael Doherty. Um, <laughs> no, I just did. I did really enjoy it. Like, it's just one of those been in wanting to see just like a badass monster movie. And, and by monster movie, I mean like giant monster movie. Um, and that's what I got. So I had a fun as fuck time watching that movie. And at number nine is Midsummer. Definitely one of those that like hasn't fully left me, even though this came out towards the middle of the year. Um, it just bees like that though with Ari Aster. Um, same thing with Robert Eggers, who I'll talk about a little bit later here. Um, and number eight is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. I was highly, highly anticipating that movie, um, having loved the books. And I feel like they knocked it out of the park, considering it could have gone much worse. It really could have. So I, I quite enjoyed it. And it's gonna be one that's on my watch list every October now. Then Ready or Not, just another fun as fuck movie. I think we all just re-fell in love with Samara Weaving. <laughs> I think we're all, I think we're all like, what this year has taught me anyway is that I just need more Samara Weaving and Lupita Nyong'o in horror movies. That's essentially just what I need to 
survive and be happy. <laughs> so at number six is Robert Eggers with The Lighthouse. Um, I finally came up with a rate ranking for it, or a rating I should say, because I went to go put it in the list and I realized I still hadn't given it a rating because in my <laughs> in my review, I was just so, it definitely wasn't one to try and do a first impression review of. I realized my mistake there. Mostly because maybe it's not like the most like, I guess like classically enjoyable film to watch. Like it didn't give me the warm fuzzies or anything, but it definitely stuck with me. That's for certain. Moving into the top five here. Um, I went ahead and put one cut of the dead. I know technically it says 2017, but it wasn't made available for me to watch until this year. It was just a fun movie. It was just a fun movie. I thought it was told in a creative way. It is ultimately about like the love of making movies, kind of. So I don't know. I just had, I thought it was really fun to watch. This was one that has kind of been on my radar for a little bit. So I was really excited to finally see it. And it met expectations. More than met expectations. It exceeded them. <laughs> Moving into number four is Us, of course. Um, <laughs> just Jordan Peele knocking it out of the park. Again, I thought it was a fantastic movie. Lupita Nyong'o was fucking terrifying. <laughs> like every time I see her, I'm just kind of like struck by how beautiful she is. But then this movie kind of just like threw my brain into chaos because she was so scary as Red, where I was just like, I don't know how to, cannot compute. I don't know how to feel. Then at number three, I put The Nightingale. Um, I think starting at this one is the five star one. I just kind of talked about it. I thought it was a fantastic film. For me, I do think I like this more than The Babadook, which is weird because just they just seem like two vastly different movies. But number two, Lupita Nyong'o, just doing a clean sweep of the top five here, um, Little Monsters. You can probably tell from at least a lot of my top 10 or top 15, I do like a good horror comedy for sure. Little Monsters I thought was great. I thought Lupita was great hilarious and also slightly badass in this movie too she had did, did have one or two moments of badassery in this as well and i just thought it was endlessly funny and just one i want to watch over and over again in my number one spot i i just had to put knives out um maybe not the most traditional horror movie on this list here but again like it ultimately came down to my enjoyment of the movie and when i think about it i just i had the most fun watching that movie. I don't think I need to tell a lot of you guys because I think a lot of you guys did feel the same way and it's okay if you didn't. I just want to point that out there. Um, but I just had such a fun time watching that movie and it's one that I just want to like I immediately <laughs> wanted to go and watch it again and again and again. That's my, <laughs> my ranking. <laughs> Um, I'll link that specific list in the description if you want to see my full list there. Um, yeah. That's it. Um, I guess that's the end of this video. It's gonna be super long. Sorry. Um, thank you for watching if you made it this far. Um, if you did make it this far, I just want to thank you for watching me and supporting me in 2019. Regardless of, I know I talk about my patrons a lot, but just watching, liking, and commenting on the video is honestly the best way you can support any of your favorite creators for free. I just wanna point that out there. I wanna thank anybody Anybody and everybody at any point in this year who watched any of my videos, liked them, commented on them, shared them, you're the real MVPs. Uh, thank you, thank you for making it a great year, even though there was some stuff in my personal life that I won't get into that really sucked. Like 2019 <laughs> kind of kicked my ass. I kind of took an L a little bit, but you guys, you guys made it amazing. Like honestly. Um, so from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. And here's to a new year and a new decade of horror. Oh, a new decade of horror. Wow. I wonder what it's going to be. Sorry, I just got really excited about that. I wonder what's going to be in this new decade. This is also exciting. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Subscribe if you're new here. <laughs> Become a creepy peep today. Um, get ready for a whole decade of Nightmare Maven. We're making that a goal right now. I post videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can ring that notification bell down there to be notified every time I post a video. Maybe, who knows, maybe in this new decade, the notification bell will actually do something. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. Till 2020, stay strange. Bye.
This video is brought to you by all these lovely creepy patron peeps that you see listed here. If you want to find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep yourself, you can check out that link in the description. There's a whole bunch of fun links in the description so you can follow me on all my social media, Goodreads, Letterboxd, all that good stuff. So make sure you check out the description box. Thanks for watching. I love you. Bye.